chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupt, and your garments are, are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cry it, and the cries of them which have reaped or enter into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he do it not resist you. Now, in these first six verses of this chapter, James has two purposes. Number one, to show the ultimate worthlessness of all earthly riches. And number two, to show the detestable character of the rich, ungodly folks who obtained their wealth the wrong way. And by doing this, he hoped to prevent his readers, the believers in Christ, from placing their hopes and desires on earthly things. All right, let's look at verses 7 through 11. Be patient, therefore, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draw it nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standing before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Here we see James. He encourages the Jewish believers to endure till the return of Jesus. The prophets were examples before them. They suffered and they were patient. Then he gives the example of Job. Patience had her perfect work in his life and left him lacking nothing. And when we study the book of Job, we clearly see that the Lord is full of pity or compassion and is merciful. You have to go to the end of Job's trial to see that he learned a great lesson and that the Lord was indeed compassionate and generous with him. All right. Let's look at verse number 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any oat, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Now, James is repeating the teaching of Jesus on the mount in Matthew's gospel, chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. We are not to do any swearing. Our word is to be our bond. Our yes should be yes, and our no, no. Say what you mean, and mean what you say. All right, let's look at verses 13 through 18. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults, one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, it is said that James was a praying man. He was called Old Camel Knees because he spent so much time on his knees in prayer. And he being an example of what he was teaching here speaks of another example, Elijah. Elijah was also a great man of prayer. He prayed fervently with much passion that it would not rain for three and a half years, and it didn't rain. God honored his fervent prayer. Then he fervently prayed again for it to rain, and it rained. God again answered his prayer because he prayed with much passion. Now, Elijah is no greater than you and I. If we pray an effectual, fervent prayer, God will answer us also. God is looking for prayers filled with much passion. Hallelujah. 
All right, verses 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted a sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from debt and shall hide a multitude of sins. Listen, we need each other. We have to have each other's back. We have to have the attitude of, I refuse to allow any of my brothers or sisters in Christ to err from the truth. And if by any chance they do, I'm going to get them and bring them back to the truth. We are in this thing together. We are one.